Hello, Sam from Sound on Sound magazine here. I'm at the AES convention in New York and I'm with Martin Dorr from Hit and Mix. Hey, Martin, how are you doing? Hi, good, how are you? Excellent. Great. Really pleased to see you. Um, Likewise. We're standing in front of a computer showing your creation, which you've worked for a very long time on. Yes. Which is one of the most interesting bits of software I've seen for a long time. This is Hit and Mix Infinity Audio Editor. That's right. Um, tell us a bit about this. Um, well, basically, I've been working on it for about 17 years and it's a long time. Uh, but it's quite a complicated thing to do. Um, the difference between this and other audio editors is that it doesn't work on samples and waveforms, but um, it breaks down the audio into the individual components of frequency, amplitude, harmonics. And the benefit of this is that you can change pitch, uh, amplitude, anything you like without any kind of limit, hence the name Infinity. So it's. I guess it's what some people would call unmixing software or demixing software or source separation software yeah, in a, a sense. Kind but of, in but a sense not, it isn't. Uh, yeah, it's more like it's more aimed at being an editor, enabling you to do things like uh, cleaning up audio, um, making adjustments to recordings, adding natural sounding harmonies, all these types of things that actually weren't possible before uh, to the extent we can do it now. But what the key factor here is that you're doing all of this to what starts life as a stereo audio file. You don't have to have the separate stems in order to do That's this. That's correct. So I can yes. take a mixed audio file, isolate the vocal, add harmonies to that vocal. That's right. Process them in other ways and then put them back again. Yes, and the harmonies um, won't sound computerized because you can minutely adjust the, the pitches to make it sound like another singer. And you've also made it very open-ended because you've introduced something called RIP scripts. That's right. So explain a, how, a little how those work. Um, well, basically, we thought, well, we've got all the basic components of audio and how great would it be if you could actually write some code to do whatever you want with them? So they're written in Python. Um, there's an editor built into Infinity. And it's very simple to just type in. And it comes up with the suggestions about what you're typing, inline instructions. and. If you know anything about Python, it should be incredibly easy to do really powerful things. It works down to bars, uh, notes, uh, all the way down to the harmonics, and then straight down to phase and everything. So it really, it really is very powerful. So in terms of the workflow and the process of using Infinity then, what you do is you, the first stage is to basically import an audio file, which is, you call ripping. Yes. And this generates what you call a rip. Correct. Which on screen looks a little bit like the representations of audio you might see in a, uh, another program. But in fact, what you're seeing is not audio. No. Um, well, it is, but not in the way you know people are used to it. It's not samples. It is It's a bit like MIDI, um, but MIDI that is so detailed, it has the full quality of the original audio. Yes, yeah, so until you actually apply any processing to this, it reconstructs itself perfectly at the other end to form an exact recreation of the original yeah, signal. That's, that, that's right, exactly. exactly. So uh, there are no waveforms until you press play or export it to another package like Pro Tools. So it, it's completely open-ended in terms of how you can process. You've almost like, it's like dehydrating audio and boiling it down to the, the, the raw ingredients and then you can process them yeah. and put them yeah, back together again. pretty much, yeah. And uh, as we've been saying, the, the possibilities are pretty endless, so I'm hoping in a moment you'll give us a little bit of a demo Absolutely. of some of its capabilities. Of Until that, um, before we get there though, I mean, it's available now. What sort of price point are we talking uh, about? It's $349. And it runs on Mac and Windows, is That's that correct? That's correct, yes. Excellent, well, thank you, Martin. You're and, welcome. Um, let's have a look at what it can do. Absolutely. Okay, so we've opened up this file. This is actually recorded in 1905 and there's a lot of noise on it and it's interesting material. You can do basic things with it like click on notes, hear the piano, move it up and down, uh, change the duration, move the position, that type of thing. But what's better is that you can click on this vocal, copy, I'm pressing Control c there, and then go to this other track, which is a keyboard track that's been ripped from a stem. And it's got quite a nice presence. We can paste the audio in, and you'll hear it's not quite the right key. That can be quickly remedied by, collect by selecting up to the chord change, moving it up semitone, doing the same for this part. Up, up five. And now we have 
it sounds good, but that's not how people sing. We want to make a gradual change of pitch. So we use the draw pitch tool. We can zoom in a bit. And then just draw a fluid change. There were no restrictions on pitch or resolution because it's not stored as samples. So zoom back out and then play it back and we have So it sounds pretty much realistic. Um, one of the things that were in the original, there was a lot of noise. Um, we've got a load of rip scripts here, which come with the product. One called Audio Shop. And on the toolbar, the one at the bottom is Note Editor. Now what you can do here is select that note, for example, and it appears at the bottom. Um, now, it's not like a normal spectrum that you would see. Um, you can't see the vibrato, for example. This is because each line going across is a harmonic. And if you see the harmonic down there and you move across the number, the frequency changes with the position. That's the vibrato. So that's a basic noise removal. Now, one of the other th cool things you can do with this is making realistic harmonies. If I select that note, copy and paste it onto itself, and then move it up, you get a basic kind of harmony, but it doesn't sound great because the pitches are basically the same changing, changing at the same time. So you get a kind of resonance. Um, to compensate for that, we can go in and just draw slight variances in the pitch. You can even just make it a bit flatter. And now it sounds like there's a separate singer and a lot more like a realistic harmony. You can also use this tool called the clone tool. And this basically allows you to take different elements of one note and apply them to another. So in this case, we, if we want to take the, heart, the uh, vibrato from this note and apply it to this keyboard note, we just choose pitch changes and leave the other ones blank. We command click on the note we want to take the vibrato from and then draw it on the new note and you can see where it's taking it from and where it's going to. Okay, so one new feature in Infinity that you're demoing at the AES show is Pro Tools integration. That's right, Let me yes. look at how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So select the, um, what you'd like to um, edit in your timeline and then go to Audio Suite, Other, and Edit in Infinity. And down here, you just click Edit in Infinity, and you have a selection of different ways you can rip it. Um, this is a guitar, so we select that. Now it goes through a process of separating the notes. It doesn't take very long here. And there it is. We go into that, and we can just change the note. Just, I'll just put it up here to make it obvious. And when you've done, you just go File, Update in Pro Tools, click Update here, and now when you play it back, there you go, it's updated. And your original audio is kept pristine. Oh, very neat.